The Wrestling Mayhem Show. Since 2006, the pioneer in pro wrestling podcasting. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us and IndieWrestling.network for your independent wrestling entertainment. Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, 932 Tuesdays. We've been talking about professionalized wrestling. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the social medias here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And we are getting ready. By the way, there's a lot of game stuff over here. I didn't mention it on Awesome Cast. Extra Life is getting got set up tonight. My brother is coming in with some folks, and they're doing a live stream for the Extra Life. That thing that's been stuck in the Facebook chat that I don't remember how to get it, get get rid of it. Well, I think that link works again. So go use that, and then uh, uh, catch us on the stream here. I want to have some fun with it. I want to play video games with my mom tomorrow afternoon, for instance. Uh, so uh, for a very good cause, I am not doing 24 hours because. I'm old, I'm tired, and I work with professional wrestlers. But with me, helped us with gaming. Uh, Dutters and The Riz played spooky games on all the feeds last night. The Riz is back I, after having a night of nightmares. I did. Um, and I actually did two Let's Play uh, uh, of those mm -hmm. game uh, One was 24 hours and one was 25 hours. What? Did you have a time <clears> zone <throat> issue there? It was the, uh, it was like, right on daylight savings time or right after daylight savings time so it was like whatever gaining an hour is mm -hmm. so it was like oh you can do 24 hours or you can do 25 hours and we we're like no let's do 25 <laughs> like we were mumbling you know, all life choices after. good life choices is what you did right there Fantastic. Also with us, uh, the promoter of the APWF Triple B Experience, and I don't even know how many podcasts. I think we're in a in a neck and neck on how many podcasts we produce at this point. Bubba Brewer is also back with us on the show. Well, uh, I got uh, two that I know of. Two that it's, I know. Uh, always of. a pleasure. Two, two that I know of, and it's always a pleasure to come on, sir. When you invite me, I try to try to make it. So. Uh... Yeah, I'm just as busy, but not as busy as you are. Though. I feel like we're squeezing you between shows. You're cutting out here in about 45 minutes, so we had to, we kind of had to hot it's shut okay. this a little bit. So, but I want to get you in here on show week. Um, so I know we said uh, Joe, you are also the replacement for Joe Dombrowski, who was originally scheduled, but Joe Dombrowski got booked on the Juggalo shows this week. So uh, <laughs> there, so which is weird, you know, after he's kind of like uh um question me for my juggalo ism all these you know, all these decades <laughs> and and now he gets to work it which is got i can't wait to see those pop up on youtube but anyways um uh, before we, we don't have the new caramel apple fago that they have oh man he's gonna have he's he's gonna discover fago he's gonna come back with a with a tattooed um mm -hmm. uh clown face paint kind of situation hey uh before we get going uh we had a very exciting show i'll probably talk a little bit more later but um 880 wrestling had a wonderful show their debut at Penn Brewery on the North Shore on the parking garage with the wonderful skyline in the background and I love this trend um I know Enjoy has had this at Taco Mania previously uh through a, I think a different brewery um but Penn Brewery had a special um 880 wrestling world series um show beer and I said I was going to so, uh, thank you to uh, Alan Bish, actually, until the end of the night. He showed me this, and I was like, oh, man, I got to get one. He's like, they're sold out here. Have one. So thank you, Alan, first of all, for um, for uh, uh, handing this over to me. And I promise I'm going to do it on the show and give you a shout-out. So uh, a shout-out to our old friends at the uh, uh, long, long uh, canceled podcast, Should I Drink That, from back <laughs> in the day. I'm going to open this buddy up. And uh, it is a wonderful lager. It says it's an Oktoberfest. So it's been so long, so long since I've had one of these, and it's October festy. It's it's very festive, if you will. So there you go. That's what you're missing out. And I, I presume, I do not know this for sure, but I bet we're gonna have because uh, 880 is gonna be a Penn Brewery here for the Thanksgiving Eve episode and or episode uh, event, and uh, and I think a date in um, December as well has been announced. So um, I'm sure if you want to get your drink on, watch some good wrestling. Uh, check it out. And even some some questionable wrestling. Some of these guys are like, literally some people on the show are three months in the business. So, 
But anyway, that's a lot of fun regardless. Um, so, and, and of course, you can see how that show with a wonderful skyline and everything over on IndieWrestling.us's YouTube page uh, and everything for free. Uh, had a lot of fun out there with those guys. And it can get as cool as I was worried about. So I'm um, excited about that. And excited to, like, Penn Brewery is really excited to have us. So that's kind of cool, too, to see see how everybody was down with that, too. So anyway, so let's get into it. Hold on, let's up here. Well, let me ask you a question. How did they get the ring up? Did everybody take a piece and go up three <laughs> flights of stairs? And so, so um, at a certain point, Lawless was on on commentary and said, "We're on the roof of Penn Brewery. We're actually on the parking garage beside Penn Brewery." <laughs> so, oh, okay. um, so a little bit, but it was it was an awesome view and everything. So, really, it was like even like you drive right up into the top of the drive. It's like two levels and stuff, and, and it's gotcha. really easy to access. That's there. easy. That's a lot easier than what I was thinking. Yes. Thank <laughs> you, Hills, in Pittsburgh, for that accessibility. So we just pulled the, pulled the U-Haul up. I mean, it was the greatest It was the greatest load in and out I've ever had, because it looked like I drove my car up to where I wanted the stuff to be and just unloaded it. So like, awesome. I didn't even have to use my cart. I was like, perfect. Love this. Now, the ballroom we're going to have to use is a little more interesting. I've actually streamed not wrestling from it well before COVID. And uh, it's a nice long hallway I'm going to have to take everything into. But there is a ramp, so I appreciate that. Anyways, um, Bubba, I want to see what you were into this week with a uh, uh, general wrestling before we talk about the APWF show coming up this weekend. But uh, you watched some Canadian wrestling, is my understanding. Yes. Uh, my lovely cable system that I have at my house. Uh, you know, I was uh, privileged to uh, watch some Maple Leaf Wrestling. Uh Mm -hmm. Saturday night mm -hmm. and the opening match was something that would be a main event in any other company, my company or any other company uh, that's, you know, not as WWE or AEW. Mm -hmm. Josh Alexander opened the show. Let's put it that way. <laughs> that's amazing. Oh, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, that, it was a two night event, but I didn't watch Sunday, uh, of course, because of the greatest franchise playing Sunday night, I, I couldn't, uh, I was doing a watch along, so I couldn't watch the second night, but mm -hmm. they had AEW uh, stars, mm -hmm. uh, they had, uh, Callis was doing uh, play by play, and the, um, the guy who was let go by WWE, Morrow, uh, he does, yes, he was doing play by play. Yeah, Maranella. Yeah. Yes, and it looked professional. It looked professionally done. It looked good. It looked like it had a hot crowd, and the matches were good. Yeah, from what I saw, there was like there was a, a, a Ring of Honor Women's title, the AEW International title. I believe there was probably mm -hmm. a TNA belt in there as well. Correct. And this is Scott Demore that's running this. Um, yes, and, yes, I believe it is Demore. And he, uh, like, he had um, second match. He had was um, uh, Marshall. Uh, what's his name from AEW, which is Cody's Q buddy. QT Marshall, yeah. Yeah. Yep. He he wrestled. He he went over. And then the, the last match was the AEW AEW International Championship match Saturday. And then they had it again Sunday. Mm -hmm. Then they had the ladies con contender match Saturday for the Ring of Honor ladies match Sunday. So it was a two night event. It was um everything I saw of this, all the clips I saw of this, um, um, it looked like an AEW TNA level production, right? Yeah. Like I would not honestly be surprised if they didn't lend some production from one of those companies to it. Although I'm not sure because well, I, I guess a lot of those are independent, uh, especially probably on the TNA side. But like I'm not sure because I know Scott was a a, a kind of you know uh you know, let go, you know, unceremoniously uh, shortly after the TNA rebrand, re-rebrand, right. I guess, technically, uh, <laughs> at the beginning of the year. Um, but man, if it, if this is what he's doing with his spare time, like, holy crap, you know, I hope this, and, and this was a super show, you know, I don't know, and, and maybe you got a, 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 an air of it from um, uh, viewing it, but I don't know, is this an ongoing thing? Is this a periodic thing? You know, is it independent wrestling, you know, or is it, you know, trying to be an upper tier kind of situation. The fact that they were on pay per view, I did not realize. I only knew them from Triller, where every wrestling show well, is practically. Well, they had an opening with uh, the Hitman, actually, given uh, the the history of Maple Leaf Wrestling. So it is probably a, a new, the you know, rebranded mm -hmm. out now. Probably going to be you know every month, and maybe they're probably going to be looking for a TV show, definitely in the in the Canadian network. And if 
Mr. Khan has anything to say about it. And he probably gave Scott some money. You never know because he's got tons of money. Mm-hmm. Um, he can he can front another company too because him and his dad has his dad has tons of money to do whatever they want to do. Yeah, obviously, mm-hmm. obviously, obviously, very friendly considering the titles that were involved. And this was in, in 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 you know wondering about the TNA side. It did, like you said, Josh Alexander was a part of this show. Speedball Mike Bailey was in this show. He was in. He was in. Speedball was in the main event uh, Saturday night. Against uh, was it against Takesha uh, uh, for yes. the belt? Yeah, for the AEW belt. Yeah, and it it, it looked it was it was tremendous. Um, you know, Stu, Gray, Stu Grayson, Alex Zane was a part of this. Kylie Ray was a part of this as well. I that was a four. Of- that was a four corner match Saturday, mm-hmm. and she went over. Mm-hmm. And she looks and she looked she looked good. Like I don't see anything, you know, from her issues that she had in other companies yeah. or whatever yeah. she had. She looked great, mm-hmm. and that was a good, uh, you know, four way ladies match. Yeah, it, it, New Japan talent, AEW, TNA, all over this thing. Um, some top independent talent as well. Jin, Jin, I don't know. I don't know his, his current name, but Jinder Mahal, a part of this, it looks like. Yes. Uh, yes. So, like that's that's incredible. So, uh, one to look out for. Um, I think they have a bundle for thirty dollars on Triller if you're interested in uh, checking that out too. If you want to see the replays of those. So, um, but you know, I I know it's been advertised for a while. I'm just like, oh, this is whatever. This is like another Wrestle mm-hmm. Revolver or something, something. But it really looks like it's kind of elevated beyond something like that um like it looked good it really just looked like it, one it of looked professionally shows. done yeah. i was just going through my cable system and then i was looking through all my pay-per-view stuff on my channels and there it was and i'm like oh i'm watching this mm-hmm. so it was it was good so i mean is it, and you say that how much was it was it a 20 dollar pay-per-view like it is on trillion uh, or I, I don't i don't know <laughs> you just clicked the button and moved on, didn't you? I just click. I just click the button. And You're gonna find out later. I just press, press the button. Ca- my lovely cable system. Yes. Uh, You're like, ooh, wrestling. Click. Yep. Yep. <laughs> we'll deal with the. We'll deal with the results later. Uh, <laughs> so, um, no, that's awesome. So, uh, one to look out for. Um, and, and, and yeah, I'm curious to see how often they're going to be. If there's a flyer for something, you know. Um, but uh, you know, we talked about before. There's a big vacuum. AEW is getting that Mexico deal um, where all their shows, it looks like they're filling in all the gaps that WWE took out from uh, Fox Sports Mexico, including a new show that's a recap show for, uh, for their Monday night slot. Um, you know, it really it does feel with WWE kind of moving out again internationally. Everything's on Netflix internationally, right? Yep. Like we're getting raw, but like anything left is going to Netflix that doesn't currently have a deal that they're tied to. Uh, from what I can tell, that's a lot of gaps. That's a lot of that's a lot of companies looking for professional wrestling, and AEWs and TNAs are only going to flourish in something like this, and maybe even a Maple Leaf wrestling like this, right? I think it's good for everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I know, <clears throat> just by uh, small little pieces that I've seen, I think there is like, and I think guys like uh, Evil. No, and and Scott Demore are are trying to get uh, more more or less like talent, more or less eyes on the talent in Canada. Mm-hmm. Um, I know one of the people that I see on here multiple times is one of one of my favorite mystery wrestlers, uh, mystery wrestling wrestlers, uh, Psycho Mike. He was on the uh, show. That's amazing. He's, he's a, he was on the show. He was on the show. Uh, Morrow and Allo called his body slams. Nice. Uh, he looked at the hard cam like he always does, and like like getting getting people like a bully ray or a or a good cash or Mike Bailey or somebody like or. Or gender, I, I think it, I forget what his name is, but getting that that kind of talent on a show and then having those other talents like mesh with them mm-hmm. work. Like that's how that's how that's how quality works over quantity. Th- this is where like you want those big names. Kind of, yeah, this is like the, the older you. Know, we were, I was working with Warrior Wrestling in Chicago. These are the kind of like you know again. They're hiring me instead of a TV truck. This is a TV truck. I can tell. This is this has got to be a TV truck production. Uh, from the clips that I was yeah. seeing, right? Um, like, I sorry, guess you I, don't have a TV truck. I do not have a TV truck. You know, you get one. I, I would yeah. love to get one. I would love. To, I just want a van for my stuff. Uh, to be honest, right? So, 
um, you know, or versus like I, I can tell GCW is a, a fly pack show. Uh, New Japan in America is a fly pack show. Uh, there have been TV truck ones like some of the San Jose shows that they've done. But you but you can also like I can I can usually tell you which is just by the look of it, you know, or level cameras or something like that. And, and everything I could tell this was like a full lawn like like TNA AEW kind of look to everything. So um, or they're very good at covering up. If not, uh, again, not seeing the full show, I probably would give you a better line of that. Um, but, uh, but, it, but yeah, but it's like the, those warrior wrestling shows were like that nice mix of the TNA super indie, uh, AEW kind of talent. Right. And, mm-hmm. and those do, they do very well. Expensive as hell. I'm sure to put on. <laughs> so I went, I would not even want to know what the budget was. Me um, neither. uh, I, I, I talked business to the, to the owner of it one time and I was like, Oh, that's how this all makes sense uh, about what they were doing with their tickets, you know? Um, so it, it, it kind of, it kind of pulled back together in my head with that, you know, and I also don't understand the, the I do not understand the, um, uh, uh, the business of wrestling, if it makes sense, at least on the independent level. Um, so but, don't yeah. worry. I don't either sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, somebody showed me a spreadsheet one time and I'm like, Oh, 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 uh, so, <laughs> but anyways, no, but it, no, this is good to see, you know, and, and, and I'm surprised cause I, I keep hearing rumblings about we're getting supposedly AEW is pulling back on letting their people kind of intermingle, if you will, with like TNA stars and things like that for one reason or another. So I'm glad to see something like this is happening and is seemingly sanctioned by, by the big company. Cause I think this is only, this only helps, uh, uh gain the excitement. You know, much like, you know, I just saw a New Japan strong uh, champion, Gabe Kin- Kid on uh, uh, Ring of Honor from last week uh, when I was catching up today. You know, things like that. I love that intermingling of stuff and people um, picking up on, on on talents they're not seeing everywhere. I mean, kind of like what we see in the independents, right? Hey, this guy's going to roll over to 2PW and, and, and you know, for a little bit and nobody's seen him and da-da-da-da-da. And then, you know, now he's over at APWF or a... Uh, or, uh, 880 or something like that right you know like seeing how things kind of people kind of like fluid back and forth with things like this so um we're just really i mean if this if this stuff goes very well mm-hmm. this maple leaf wrestling and i know that greek town stuff is in canada i would love and i'm not pushing but i would love to see collier you know wrestling on shows mm-hmm. like that like yep. I, yep. and i would definitely pay pay-per-view money to see call you're on tv and i think scott is scott seems to be the kind of guy that pays attention to things like that i mean obviously the town that they brought in the tna and things like that so um yeah it seemed seemed very wrestling level-headed from my discussions with him so um and i hear nothing but good things about working with scott well, maybe that's why they can actually get everybody because yeah. everybody likes scott so yeah. that's why he He's yeah. going to get everybody from every company because nobody uh, has any ill will towards him, and they will work with him, and they know how he works. Yeah, because allegedly, like maybe they get like a little. Good, oh, okay, good, good. Sorry. I was going to even allegedly whatever was going on with Scott and, and the TNA deal when he got dropped out was between him and the office at Anthem. Uh, uh, allegedly, you know, through the search sheets and things, who knows? Yeah, the boys uh, liked them, yeah, so that's yeah. you know, everybody was like, "What the fuck?" You know, we're doing something here, you know. Um, yeah, like just get a little discount. Like just be like, hey, maybe you can, like, I can be be on your first show, and then he got like, everybody on a favor rate. Yeah. You watch, yeah, yeah, that's what actually happened hey, here. Hey, God bless him if he did. I'm yeah, telling seriously. it. God bless him if he did. I'm like, listen, I'm paying the, I'm paying the TV truck. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure speed, I'm I got sure a brother, Mike's, brother rate for everybody. Yeah, I'm sure Speedball's a nice guy. <laughs> oh, God, he is not. I, he's impossibly nice. Yeah, <laughs> like I'm sure he went. Uh, he went up to Speedball and went, do you want to do this? He goes, yeah. So like, what's your price? I don't care. Hey, brother, you're gonna wrestle like, like, I, I feel like I feel like it's like you're going to wrestle to catch it in, you know. Did you see mm-hmm. these? What was it like? Uh, plus he's Canadian. Plus he's Canadian. So he's, so, yeah. he's homegrown. Yeah, exactly. Home sprouted up there. Mm-hmm. Um, did you see his, uh, what was that spinning leg drop he did? <laughs> Shooting star oh. leg drop or something that, that rolled through? <laughs> So, um, no, good stuff there. Good to see there's some new wrestling happening in in the Canada's. Where did they hold this show? I, I missed. What was it in Toronto area or because oh, Border there's... City? Because uh, Scott used to run Border City Wrestling, and I thought that was just uh, over the border from Detroit. Last I heard, because um, I know, Maybe. I know, I know. Like I said, uh, like Sunday was Alexander versus the catcher, so mm-hmm. that was the main mm-hmm. event Sunday. So that that whole. Those two 
I mean, that whole two events. I think you probably got a price deal if you bought two, probably. Man, I wish I, I, w- I wish I had six hours to sit down and watch these shows. Yeah, <laughs> Jeez. we're talking about time before the show. That's that's a big one there. Uh, from the uh, from the uh, chat room here, uh, Tina. Of course, Tina's going to keep us honest out there in Seattle. Uh, it was a shooting star weapon X was the move. Yep, and uh, it was St. Clair College in Windsor, Ontario. God bless her. Windsor, Jeez. Ontario. Oh, I know where Ontario is. Okay. So, uh, no, yeah, I think Windsor is, yeah, over by Detroit. So, actually, mm-hmm. wait a minute. I was, like, right by You're this the right other there, night. Sir. I was at Taylor Michigan on Friday went. night for the Ricky Shane Page show. So... It's like, why didn't you go somewhere? Why didn't I go? Because I was doing I was doing something at Pan Brewery. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> mm-hmm. As as you take the swing over mm-hmm. the air with, with the logo Our facing new forward. New friend, new like wrestle that. friends at Pen Brewery. How's it going? <laughs> You're, you're, you're already giving me ideas. Um, so our new friend, our new friend Stefan. Hey, turns out breweries are the way to go <laughs> in mm-hmm. wrestling these days. Enjoy there, dinner. There's, Enjoy. There's one in my own town. Uh, yeah, and and they love wrestling. It, 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 two two notes, and we'll we'll go to the break and move on. I want to make sure we're talking about what's going on with you here because we're at limited time. That's okay. But um, uh, and Joy just did uh, obviously Taco Mania, which is with the beers of the Berg. Uh, and and have had, had their own enjoy beer and stuff there too, right? They did a, a vel- I keep messing up the villain villain. This is why I'm not on on the microphone for this. Is it uh, Valium? Val- no, 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 not Valium. 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 Not Valium. So they were at a brewery in the was, south side. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just say they're at a really cool brewery to, in the south side. To- Make sure you don't say that word. Sir. Um and uh, and and uh, our friends that we mentioned Warrior Wrestling. Vellum. Vellum. Thank you. Um, our friends at Warrior Wrestling, uh, uh, you know, they you know they kind of contracted down their shows to, from these big super shows that they're doing at football stadiums and things like that to they are doing these brewery shows. Now they still have Mustafa Ali and things like that there, and Kylie Ray and is one of their favorites to have on their shows and had been for a while. Um, so there's really good stuff happening there. But again, they're just they're doing that like breweries and they're going up to Milwaukee and doing another brewery and they're based in Chicago and they did a they did a they did a, a trampoline park. Um, not too long ago, too, which I still need to see the footage from this thing. Henry, please, please. I, I, I'm sure it's online or something, but Henry, I need to see this stuff. Um, Henry Jasper was really amazing. They're uh, they're they're a cinematographer out there for Warrior Wrestling. Just just awesome, awesome stuff. Um, that I had a chance to work with, but uh, no. So so, so I, there's something to it, man. I, and I think it that's be, it. Must be like a dinner in a movie now. Yeah. So everybody's everybody's going to these breweries, which everybody has them probably in every town. Because yeah. I, like I said, I have them in ours, um, and I will check on that uh, if the facility is. It's a huge facility, mm-hmm. um, but you never know. But it seems like you go there and it'd be like dinner in a movie, but the movie is wrestling. Tina uh, in Seattle is uh, uh, filling us in on the rest of who else is doing this. Uh, Relentless Wrestling, she thinks Relentless Wrestling does their uh, shows in Spokane. Spokane? I was messing this Spokane. up. Spokane. Oh, it is Spokane. What was it, I saying It's Spokane. Last not like, oh, spoke, yeah. I said Spokane. Okay, got you. So you said Spoken. Uh, uh, and, and, it's spoken at one point. NCL North out of Newcastle, UK does their shows at one as well. But I, I think that's the thing. And that's the thing that... I, we Wait, had, CL? NCL. No, not CL. NCL? He's not here. NC N C L. Um I know it still sounds like I'm saying C L. Uh, but anyways, say, that's our videographer NCL. that works with us at eight eighty. Sometimes that's a fine line though from the you know, doing stuff if you're having a lot of uh, booze and alcohol mm-hmm. because I know uh in my history sometimes that doesn't mesh well. No, no. Uh, but but I think there were- there's something missing, like I feel like the majority of shows in the in the area had not had alcohol. Right. And that's a different vibe and it's a different audience. Right. Mm-hmm. It's also a different money input potentially. Right. Like Penn Brewery is happy to have a big show and sell some more beers. Right. Yeah. You know, and to the point where they're going to do a custom beer like this. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I don't know the business of it. I don't know if it gets a cut for having the picture on it or whatever. It was just part of the partnership or what. You know, I'm not part of the business. I just show up and shoot video guys. Uh, I'm trying to make it look cool. Um, but, you know, I think that is it because I think everything, you know, in this past week, and uh, you know, ha- happened at a brewery, a a, con- a winery <laughs> was Wrestle Rex. Enclave is a is a concert venue that serves alcohol, and I know that was a very big push on it when Wrestle Rex was there at the Enclave or Rex, Rex Theater or whatever it was. You know, at the time was like there was like, oh, we have a match in the break. Why are we doing this? So they can go buy beers. 
and buy tacos yep. or whatever. I was like, oh, oh, that's the business in this yep. point, right? That's the point of this um, at, at that point. You know, it's just like you watch Raw because there's commercials, right? That's why there is Raw is there's commercials. That's why they're out of this to sell beer. That's why you have an intermission for your concession. So your concession is, exactly. is the alcohol and the beer. And if you're basing it on volume, and my many years of being a bar manager, that's what you want to base it on. You want to base it on volume um, and not having people get so overly over the top. Yes. But they're yes. still there enjoying themselves yes. watching a show. And it's a different vibe of a show. It's a different audience thing, you know, versus, you know, the, you know, the other shows that we call it gymnasium Stuff which shows. you're bringing to family. And yeah, you have, yeah, yeah. Four or it's five a kids. different it's audience. Different, yes. And that's what I always say. I'm like, different people come to these than come to the other shows, right? Yeah. Like, this isn't mm-hmm. as much crossover. Except There's, the super like, I, we were talking on Saturday about the shows that were happening around town. Mm-hmm. And the first words that came out, that came out were, I don't think any of these people would be at the sh- the one in uh, A80 and vice versa. No, no, exactly. Like it, it, it was, exactly. And, and also that kind of energy, I guess mm-hmm. is a good word for it. I guess that, uh, that kind of energy would be good for people who would be drinking at a wrestling show. Well, uh, then also uh, uh, RWA achieves that chaotic energy without alcohol. That's true. So there's that too. R- RWA would <laughs> yeah, exactly. be Exactly. I do not want to add anymore. alcohol to that audience no. at all. It will be, you know, just, I will need hazard pay. It just, it hey, just. All, all, all as I know is one time I had alcohol and I had New Jack at the same place. No, oh, no. no. <laughs> yeah. The alcohol so, is I mean, I know, I know. At least yeah, that's a, yes, that's a very historic, uh, historic night in the, the, the company's history. It happened. And mm-hmm. It's well documented. Oh my god! State police show up. So. Yeah, yep. Uh, that's a good point because Tina points out that at Defy Wrestling at Washington Hall, the beer is flowing, and that it was one of the damn loudest rooms I have ever experienced. Was Defy mm-hmm. Wrestling up there? So, anyways, I want to take a note here, and we need to talk with Bubba about what's going on this week. Uh, but first of all, thank you to our friends that are supporting us at Patreon.com/slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, everybody supports. We have a, a special feed for you guys right now. Had a little bit of our chatter before the show and our Patreon with our illegal, our illegal, not not good for the internet, not allowed on the internet. Friends of the show are allowed to join us over there, and you can uh, be a part of that. patreoncom slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Thank you, everybody that does support the show. Our friends at the fan and show level, Bo Diggity, woo, as well as Team Hammerfist, the Tupac family, fa- fama. Famama, Famama, Famama. It's that, it's that beer you're drinking. That's why yeah, I don't drink on the good. show. I only do it for Christmas, so this is a special occasion. Uh, hey, Bubba, you support the show too. Thank you. Uh, I do. I of, try of the Triple B exp- <laughs> Triple B Podcast Network. Um, <laughs> to Jason French, <laughs> I'm gonna say it different every time. Uh, <laughs> Poppy Club level, our friends Dave Pop Pop Potter, and Rats in a Trench Coat Tony Kincaid at the Pizza Club level. The Riz is joining us uh, on. That. Uh, can I can I point yes, something out? Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know. Last week I um, had a picture up here of. You know, of of, uh, of our uh, manager Bradley, of our manager, uh, this one. Oh, there it is. There uh, you go. Okay. Yeah, there's that one. Uh, but Wedgie. again, I don't want to you know uh, do that often, and so it's kind of just oh shoot. Um, just about so. Oh, is your button stuck? Shit. Oh, yeah, um, your butt button stuck. Mm. Fuck. Okay, mm. I'm back. Okay, you're good. Okay, you're good. <laughs> yeah, you don't even okay. have Hogan in the corner. Is Hogan out of timeout? Is Buddy Hogan out of timeout? Um. What I'll happened? get that later, sort of. Well, oh, no. Oh, we're going to do a bit. Okay. Well, but Brewery, you got it. It's not a bit. It's not <laughs> a bit. I, sorry, I'm talking. I'm sorry. I'm talking. Okay. A podcast kayfabe that. I swear <laughs> Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyways, oh, Bubba Brewer, you're still doing something this weekend. Look, I'll put this back up. So oh, there we go. All right. I feel it, better okay? about this already. You feel better. There you go. That's what's better. better. Is, 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 is that what you want? Man, the audio people are you just, want, what the fuck is going on? Do you want on? Bradley to be mad at me again? I'm, I'm crying. <laughs> I'm from laughing. Anyways, what the hell? Storg okay. is, Storg is already having a blast. I'm like, I'm like half a can into this. Um, <laughs> just half a can? a big can, though. <laughs> it is a pretty good size can. Like, and I drink, I've been drinking nothing but White Claws for the longest time, so 
you know. Oh, you got to work your way up. Oh no, what is this percentage here? I, I mean, I've been kind of like. Yeah, say what is the percentage? It doesn't theory. say a percentage. What does that mean? It's probably what very potent. Oh, five point five percent. That's potent. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, all right, all right. Um. Anyways, APWF is this Saturday in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. I'm excited at the castle with a K. Uh, okay. So, Bubba, this is the third show of the uh, uh, rebooted era of APWF. Am I saying yes. that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are. Okay. Uh, I, and it was only be like I told everybody, it was only supposed to be one show. Like one that. show in Indiana is all it was, and it turned into turned into three. And um, I want to give a hats off to my staff, but it's it's a different uh, it's a different. Uh, different vehicle this time around doing mm-hmm. this stuff it is not it's not hard it's look it's not hard but it's not easy so i mean i mean those kids loved her mm-hmm. you know and there's a lot of kids at, at, at the shows of course at the castle it's fan friendly mm-hmm. but they do serve uh sarsaparillas oh okay you know? oh okay. boy they do serve sarsaparillas you know i mean i can be the promoter and bouncer at the same time so there you go um you know, and everybody's just you know having a few of watching the show, and that's and that's what it is. And probably every show that's that has this stuff that has alcohol in every independent show. You know what I mean? Nobody gets over the top. You know? So uh, you know, we, you know, we talked early on. I mean, we, you know, we 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 had discussions. You're kind of uh, relearning this new era and everything. You're three shows in. I think I I think we had you before the second one, and I was like, what'd you learn from the first one and everything? Uh, so, I'm, well, today I'm working on the uh, you know getting the sound. Uh, my okay. other half, my wife, is getting all the stuff downloaded to make sure. Uh, Josh from the castle was our sound guy the last show, and thank God for that. Um, mm. I try to learn something new from every show. Mm-hmm. Um, I spoke my mind and my opinion of that last main event against right there hey, against hey, Big Time that guy and Spencer Slade. And I maybe said some stuff that people don't agree on some people mm-hmm. that didn't like it, but I think that was the best match so far that I've ever seen in my company's history. And I know mm-hmm. the history cause I've been with it since the first show in 98. So those two individuals put on a showcase that night and you know, Jason uh, Hendricks and Zach Nystrom started to show off with a bang in August. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it just started from there. And, um, and like I said, you know, going into this, I'm not going to be able to get everybody, you know, all the time. And, and that's the thing. So it's an expanded roster like no other. So getting guys when I can get them and girls when I can get them, that's what I have to do. Now, on this show Saturday, uh, we have Elijah Dean versus Gorgeous Gregory. Has never, ever faced each other, Ooh. ever. So right there is a marquee matchup in our show. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's hard to get people, but, you know, we had to, we had, we had, we had money shot, but Zach had a, a situation in Canada mm-hmm. and uh, things happen, you know, so I'm not a prick. You know, things happen. Opportunities are there for him to hopefully get, and I would never, ever hold anybody back. No, it was good to see Zach in uh, Cowpoke Paul, which I think was another first ever match that you had at your very first show mm-hmm. yes. a few months well, ago. Well, those, two, those yeah. two contact, when I saw him at uh, Rise Wrestling, they are like, oh, we've never worked. I go, well, if you want to, let's mm-hmm. do it. So, I mean, I'm, I'm open, you know, with getting talent that never worked with uh, other talent before, you know, as long as I tell my... Uh, my booker you know what i mean and we can get stuff done i mean we have eight matches um saturday night mm-hmm. uh, like uh you show there slam and sammy is back um and for me it was it was very hard to get female wrestlers to get back to me i don't know why maybe because they think it's uh, i'm new in the, in the block i think um that maybe was the problem but now i got some people getting a hold of me and hopefully 2025 uh we go bigger and better you know well, I think I think that's the other thing. You're still um, showing people what you guys are doing out here because I, I I think like you know it, it appears that you're doing um, something of a showcase show. You're bringing in talent out there that doesn't get featured in the area um, as well, yeah. or or there's well, whatever you know uh, uh, you know with promotions out there already. Uh, so you know you're, you're, we don't have any storylines, so that's what people yeah. sometimes uh, get people in. Okay, mm-hmm. the storylines to me is the. Uh, 
the wrestlers mm-hmm. telling their story inside the ring. Absolutely. So you're going to get great, exciting wrestling action. That's what you're there for. I mean, it could be, you know, APWF could be, could be like the old house shows at WWE. Mm-hmm. You got great wrestling when you showed up when you were a kid. You know, um, it's just uh, getting good talent and having the matches, you know, set up and, and go from there and just spread the word. It's very hard because, I mean, a lot of people, I didn't know starting the show, we had some other talent, but there was another show that came up and some other people had to go. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it happens. Is that know, a joke? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, everybody, I just, everybody runs the same Saturday. I know that. <laughs> yeah, I, well, that's why I like running Sundays, and hopefully yeah. they don't steal my formula. But I mean, I had to, I had to run um, shows in the fall because I'm not compete. I can't compete against the Steelers. I just can't. I just can't do it on Sundays. There's no way. There is no way. In God's mm-hmm. green earth, unless you know, I'm down there at Heinz Field, you know, doing a show in front of you know fifty thousand people in the parking lot. Other than that, that's the only way I would do it. Like, <laughs> no, so, we just need to combine them. I mean, you just need to do a show in the parking lot. With the wrestling, you know, yeah, we'll do, we'll do, well, a, to- I mean, we'll do a tailgate you know, show. <laughs> well, it's good for it's good for me doing a a Steeler podcast, so I can get connections and uh-huh. work and do all that kind of stuff too. So I can incorporate the the Steelers and and, and uh, you know professional wrestling. Fine, you know, because you never know if I can get some Steelers to come to my shows. Believe me, I will. Absolutely, absolutely. Hey, they're always, they, hey, you see them in the front row of Raw all the time, right? So why not? Mm-hmm. You know, if they can be get a little more involved and have some fun with yeah. it, you know, then maybe WWE will let them. Although I don't know, they're getting a lot of people involved these days. <laughs> like some yeah. guys from the NBA yeah. were getting real involved with some of that Logan Paul stuff, if I recall. So, uh, well, they they they're they're putting all their money into him, and he's going to oh, make yeah. him a lot of money. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> already is right. So. Um, no, but it's a lot of fun. I get these shows, you know, they're going out for free uh, and you know, everything will be, uh, uh, online on your channels, on our channels on indie wrestling.us mm-hmm. as well. Uh, I, I, I've appreciated a lot of, you know, it, it's been quality wrestling, you know, it's a lot of, there's some faces that I don't know there, but you know, it's again, yeah, I, I appreciate, um, I, I always appreciate companies that, are taking, you know, I feel like sometimes wrestlers are in a silo. Maybe, maybe they're, you know, hey, these guys are 2BW, these guys are RWA, and they don't interact yeah, or no, something There's like no that. loyalty and no allegiance. It's well, just, you uh, take them out of the territory. That's why I love just, That's why I loved Erie to begin with, because it was a mix of that Cleveland-Pittsburgh-Buffalo talent that we don't get yeah. to see touch too often. And, and speaking of mm-hmm. Buffalo, those guys were booked or they'd be on the show. The those Buffalo guys boys. are some great talent. Vince mm-hmm. Valor, McCoy, Kennedy. They are some great talent, you know, um, and we just couldn't get them for this show. And like I said, sometimes we couldn't get them. We can't get Bill Collier every time. I mm-hmm. mean, my God, I would love to. Spencer Slade. I, things happen. Those guys are booked everywhere. And, you know, it's just, you know, that match right there is, um, I can't rave about it enough. Uh, the camera work, those guys lit everything in the ring. And it was something, ev- they wrestle everywhere. But when they wrestle everywhere, it's an epic encounter everywhere they wrestle. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was just glad that we got them uh, a match uh, in, in our company's history. Because I never thought in my wildest dreams that we would be able to book Slade versus Collier in my company ever. Never thought in the wildest dreams. And now, I would never have thought that I'd be booking Gorgeous Gregory versus Elijah Dean. Mm-hmm. Our main event is the Troublemakers. Those guys are trouble wherever oh. they go. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So they're going against the Rad Boys, and we have a special. They have a special surprise partner. As soon as that person comes out the curtain, and you'll know who it is right there in bed. But mm-hmm. you know, the Rad Boys aren't giving their. Uh, they're not laying their cards out on the on the table. You know, and we got you know, Tad Jarvis. So we got uh, Ashton Day from N. You've probably seen him in uh, NWA Exodus. Yep, yep. Very familiar with Ashton Day between yeah, Exodus and now Neo Pro here on the network. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of him too. He's a he's a great talent. Yes, I'm I'm excited to to uh, you know we've been uh, contacting back and forth, and I I like his work, mm-hmm. and I like a lot of those guys' his work out in uh, you know out in EC3's uh, Federation. Yeah. And when I can get those guys, I I like to bring them in when I can. I like to bring in. And I like to give everybody an opportunity when I can, Sure, you know, but I just can't give everybody an opportunity, you know, just because they, re- they say they wrestle. Sometimes they just, they say they wrestle, but can they wrestle? Yeah, we see that. <laughs> we see that a few yeah. times. So. Yeah. yeah, I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm not, I'm not doing I, that. I, 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 I give opportunities, but you got to be, you got to be trained mm-hmm. and you got to know, you just got to, you just, 
I don't know. I'm I'm old school. Uh, I, I want guys I've always, look like wrestlers. I've always been shocked that people who say they've been around for a couple of years, and 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 the guys we're seeing that we we're just talking about three months in on the show Saturday night are are doing more than them. You know, it's just it's incredible how that goes. Um, well, nowadays it, it, you can get booked three or four nights a week now. Yeah, back then yeah. it was back back twenty years ago. It was just Allied Powers Wrestling Federation, PWX, and Steel City Wrestling around here. That was it. <laughs> So if you weren't booked and you and you weren't getting booked on uh, Norm Connor's show at Steel City because he was booking names and he was mm -hmm. booking guys for Maryland Championship Wrestling and if you weren't them you weren't getting booked. I know there's a lot and of companies. a lot of those guys are a lot of those guys were big independent names and we had them in in our company too. So and they were they were great. Sister Rose, the cue balls, and oh, Kristen and Joey Matthews. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I go on and on and on. Uh, Riz, Riz re re uh, remembers the sister Rose and the cue balls. I'm sure. I'm from the RWA yes, days I remember when they came back. The old arrow. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I yeah they, well, Riz's first show, I think one of them power drove uh, Ron Ronald Mitchell's mother in the ring. Yes. So, oh yeah. yeah. I no, that. no, <laughs> not in the ring. It was, it was it? outside. It was outside. No way, it was outside. Oh no, no, no. no. You're right. You're right. The it mom was, was, was in the, the ring. ring. Dad might have been the outside. Was, <laughs> the mom was in the ring. I, I think was he was outside. That was, I think the riot was later, but they were not yeah. happy. <laughs> and Mitchell, so, Mitchell was, was a great close. performer too. Huh? Mitchell was a great performer too. Oh, I absolutely. mean, we had him. Mm -hmm. I had him booked when, before he uh, went to the service, and God bless him for his service. Yes, um, he he was great in the ring, consummate professional. A lot of a lot of these guys that we all know, they they've retired and they're doing other mm -hmm. stuff. But Western Pennsylvania wrestling wouldn't be anywhere with a lot of these guys. And yep. some of these young guys need to realize wasn't for older guys paving the way you young guys wouldn't be here mm -hmm. no it comes from somewhere we didn't get this out of nowhere i Hopefully mean even I even, even look, look even, i say even looking at the people involved in 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 the four shows you know this past week it was like it's a lot of vets that are putting these together that have been around for yes. a while and been around the yeah. benefit so and everybody uh, and all the vets are uh you know are well respected like i respect Dean radford so much and, mm -hmm. you know brandon k and, and quinn and Paul Atlas, and you know, I mean, those guys are the pinnacle. Brian Anthony, they're the pinnacle of of Western Pennsylvania independent wrestling. You know, mm -hmm. absolutely. Well, Bubba, I know you got to go. You have other obligations here. I just yeah, I'm talk sorry. To I'd love minute. to stick around and talk Man, wrestling, but I, I got. I, 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 we talked for three hours. If we didn't have this, I could talk. I could talk forever on wrestling. I was talking with the uh, Indiana Gazette uh, for the show on Saturday. I know we talked about an hour, and I could talk all day long, but I. I of course, I got to do the Steelers Dynasty podcast where we're, we're doing a collaboration with the uh, my buddy from Australia. We do mm -hmm. uh, Steelers Nation Australia, so the Steelers podcast and stuff is is actually getting very very big, and um, it all intercombines with the wrestling and the podcasting. So, I mean, I appreciate everybody you know that spreads the word, and I appreciate everybody that that you know, like you, sir, are giving me the time to come on the show and mm -hmm. actually talking about my company and it, it's it's a grassroots campaign i gotta like i told the, the reporter i have to get i have to go door to door in my area to get people to realize there's independent wrestling in indiana pennsylvania in the johnstown area i i'll have to do it because i think i'm i'm gonna toot my own horn i think i'm probably one of the only few promoters that still drive around and put posters up in the area mm -hmm. and that's the truth mm -hmm. and i'm gonna be the only promoter that uh you know put my ring in a u-haul and and set it up and tear it down. So, I mean, it is what it is. No, you need I a mean, training school, real bad. No, I no. Those are those are nothing but headaches, too. Though I did that before. It's nothing but a headache. And uh, well, never say never. Yeah. You know, I was I would just build a building here in my yard and then just have the school right here. There but, you uh, go. There you go. That, yeah. that, you can't beat the Thank commute, you. right? Um, yeah. Hey, well, you can't beat the traffic. But first of all, I got to miss the last one. I'm excited to be there for uh, this Saturday. Uh, I think I think well, we we're excited to have you guys and 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 you guys do sponsor us yes you know, indie wrestling us and we we do appreciate that and uh, getting um, the footage on your channel is great and I have a whole bunch of old footage from yesteryear mm. that I uh, yes that I would like to get out mm -hmm. um, you know when you know when I got beat up by Bundy and DDT by Jake and the, you know, free birds. How <laughs> many times did Bubba Bush. die to the stars? I, yeah. I'm here for it. I'm well, I mean, I had an interview with Quackenbush and I didn't realize Quackenbush's first seminar was in the APWF. There you go. His first huh. seminar. I didn't know that when I, until I did the interview and Quack was a, was a champion back in the day for us. So mm -hmm. it's, I mean, there's a lot of history that 
people do not know in Western Pennsylvania, but we're, 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 we're back. Mm -hmm. We're doing epic quarterly events as much as we can. We can do fundraisers if they contact us, mm -hmm. but we are just trying to give a positive, uh, aspect to professional wrestling and do shows that some of the ticket proceeds go for charities. This, this one Saturday is going to go for make a wish. Um, organization and uh and also too we're doing another one where jt toys and collectibles are doing something for epilepsy awareness at his table so we're doing two charities at the show and we're doing a halloween costume party so i mean nice. i'm doing a lot saturday i'm not dressing up i'll dress up as a promoter <laughs> there you go up. for the tie and everything hey give me real quick about tie. i want you to, i want I can, can you can you reach in deep do one thing for me on your way out the door here i want you to reach in dip a uh, deep to the the old days of the bubster Okay, and give me no a real quick, bumpster. give me a real quick promo to get them there on Saturday. Oh man! Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Bad Bubba Brewer, and I'm telling you guys what: if you're not there at the castle at 7 p.m., six o'clock, the doors are open. I expect you to be outside that building with your ticket money in hand and buy tickets to see the Allied Powers Wrestling Federation, and we will see you Saturday night at the castle facility. There you go. Bubba Brewer, go check him out. And you'll see the As It Was podcast here on the break here in a few moments, too. So thank you so much. Uh, you know what? With that, we're just going to go ahead to commercial. We'll come back and talk about whatever else is going on in the Pittsburgh area, in the wrestling world, AEW, WWE, or whatever the hell Riz wants to talk about. We'll be right back <laughs> after this. I'm Eamon. I'm Merlin. And we're a gay. And his NB. Are you a reality television connoisseur? Do you like to discuss from an LGBTQ lens? If so, a gay and his NB is the podcast for you. Hear us break down all your favorite guilty pleasure reality shows from Bravo, Drag Race, and just about everything in between. Listen to a gay and his NB on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. The Riz is here on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Keep it on here, sir. And Hogan is out of, out of timeout. He's, uh, wow. well, he's, he's going at, back in timeout. Look at it's the fine. intensity in it's his fine. eyes. Look it's at fine. that. Look at that. I think we need to put him back in timeout. Yeah, I was I was actually him. watching. I watched about half of the. Uh, they had the A and E doc, uh, bio on Macho Man, uh -huh. and of course, there's a lot of Hogan. And, oh, how he just not, decides to whitewash everything that he's that I don't know. Macho there Man was has whole, ever said about him. There was a whole thing about why they were not friends for ten years or whatever, and it's just like because right. he. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, well, it was yeah. There's a whole story about like Elizabeth was there and he didn't know it, and she didn't know that he didn't know it, and. He took it personally, and I was like, all right. Yeah. Like, I take it for what it is. It's like, it's wrestlers telling stories, so you, like, we know not to take it's it 100%. So Any documentary is just all through a lens, right? So, but, um, but no, I mean, it was, it was, I mean, it was really well done. It wasn't just a recap -y recap, you know, it was a really good, <laughs> I do love Hogan's like, yeah, I don't expect that they were really trying to like steal our, you know, you know, steal a show from uh, uh, me and Andre or anything like that. And then Steamboat's like, we were completely trying to steal a show from Andre. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. It's just like, what the hell? <laughs> so, anyways, that that was on there because it's on Hulu, but I just can't watch it with the commercials, man. I, I and I, I don't think I can get the non-commercial version right now because of reasons. Um, thank you for weirdness. Um, actually, I wouldn't shouldn't even have it. So. I pay for it legally, but but still, it's just it's a thing. It's what is hey, we get it about here? Um, Riz, I wanted to tell you, tell you about the shows this weekend, including the one that gave yeah. me beer. Um, so <laughs> which I and, and, and we can tell stories. I'm about drinking shows, this so. now because I will not touch a drop of alcohol on show day. You see how I'm like I've flubbing shit how, right now? Yeah. Could you imagine me trying to run a show like this? You know, no. it just I'm trying to once or twice. You know, and it's not great. Why is Jamie Jameson just mugging me at the bottom of that can? What is happening right there? Uh, so anyway, this is a uh, Jack Pollock's work, by the way. It is uh, very nice. It's, it's very very cool. I love the style eyes on everybody. Took me a while to realize that's MV on the on the other quarter. Where this one right here? Yeah, he's very that one and then he's on very the other beardy, side. isn't he? Look at look at he's very. Matt he has Connard. a lot of hair. I was um. There's a picture of Matt Connor and Lexus Sin. Uh, behind them because uh, they they did she was part of the black uh, black uh, black hand society yes. team 
And I just like, I sent it to, and I didn't want to put it publicly because I didn't think anybody else would get this, but I sent it to specific people that would notice. And I was like, um, um, you know, is this wrestling or a sexy dark Lotus? Uh, which is the ICP twisted man where they wore hoods and stuff like that. When, as a super you're right. You, you, so, you, yes, you, I'm you're the, right, there's like two right people out there that probably understand that. But uh, <laughs> I mean, this show started on somebody on this channel that would probably know that. So that is true too. Uh, also, Facade shared the 2001 Kennywood Juggalo Day picture, which mm -hmm. I think I started coming the next year. So that's he's older school than I am on that one. I was doing stuff. I just I don't know. There was a reason I didn't go to it, but you know. yeah. Um, uh, so how? Like, yes, I, I obviously wasn't there. Yeah, uh, I was busy doing the other show that the RWA was show simultaneously running at R uh, against eight eighty. Yeah, wait till you see what I was running up against for RWA this month that we have to handle. So oh, I just no. got some news today. Is all I want to say. Oh, uh, if you know what a calendar works. You can probably figure out what it is. Uh, but anyways, um, but anyways, you're saying you were yeah RWA, which also looked like a great show. Hentai uh, uh, dog car match for the uh, <laughs> the right to uh, super hentai. No spoilers, yeah. Riz. I haven't okay, watched yeah, it yet. True. I put I, I edited just, out the I edited out the intermissions and stuff, but I did not watch the results. So just no super anti one. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Uh, it's just like that run with SummerSlam. I can tell you an Undertaker is going to win. Yeah. The okay. Undertaker won. The Undertaker hey. won. Kane beat Kane. But no, it looked like a good show. I was watching with bits and pieces of uh, Gianni and uh, uh, the Renegade Rider, is it? Yeah, um, Beast Man you know, in the replays. So, so I don't know if you caught um, the the audio was good, right? Because I, I did, did <laughs> you me, catch? Yeah, I listened yeah. to some of it. Did but. you did you catch like some of the stuff that uh, for the Renegade Rider match? Like, did you hear like J Rock? What he was saying? Uh, I, okay, I was a little busy, Riz, to really kind of okay, digest yeah. what was happening. But. So he kept. So I I, I kind of get it. He, he said it was it, the, the move set, the move sets, the some of the mannerisms kind of look familiar, and um, we could be having a Mister America thing on our on yeah on, yeah. Way. It's obviously MV like, Young. It, it's obviously oh yeah, it could be MV Young. You came out the Renegade. Uh, That's kind of a giveaway. It's kind it of did come out. To yeah. Renegade. So uh, Renegade Rider is you know, absolutely could, could, MV Young. It could also be Hulk Hogan. Allegedly, yes. Allegedly, um, I mean, but he kept saying like it was like McChesney. I mean, it could even be Matt. We haven't seen Matt. We have RWA. not seen Matt at RWA for a so while. Matt could well. be the Renegade Rider. Yeah, maybe he got trained in the last month and a half. Who knows? Who knows? Um, but in, in all seriously, in all seriousness, that was that that was actually a really fun show. Mm. Um, it's Bloody Harvest. It was, it was Bloody Harvest. It wasn't one of the ones that was like a oh here's a a new guy coming or a, a, a w, former WWE or ECW star that came in. Yeah, it was although, although Heath Slater is coming next month. Heath Slater is coming next month. Uh, but this show with with a lot that was happening around town that day. Mm -hmm. That you can probably see in the news, um, like it, it still packed the house. And oh, really? They did. I thought. I thought you said they, they were. I thought they were down because of the rallies. So it, it, it wasn't as big as it was, but it, there was a, it did good. a good. lot more people that came in. There, like maybe minutes before the, the first show. Oh, nice first okay. bell. Good, um, good, good to hear. Yeah. And again, I don't think that would be. I got that some off-color jokes that I will not say on the show that go. Nope. Uh, nope. Anyways, um, so my show uh, was very interesting. We were on a parking garage. I think I just said with Bubba, we're on a parking garage uh, uh, at Penn Brewery, um, and it was like, like I kind of like it's one of those like 
this is the show I was stressed out about because I knew it was an outside show. I was looking at the weather report and how cold it might get. Uh, uh, there's a lot of logistical issues when you do an outside show like this. So, uh, you know, we've all, had issues with out- outdoor shows. We have definitely had issues. Like, uh, um, there's no nothing in a forecast. And an hour before, we find out there's a severe thunderstorm coming. You know what I mean? Like zero in a forecast. And I was like, there's zero. It's all clear. And I was like, I don't, I don't trust it. I don't trust it. Don't tell me this. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, but remember, literally, they, there has not been a cloud in the sky for a week here in Pittsburgh. So right. we, which also means it's really freaking cold at night. Uh, so that was a little concern. But we get on this, and I drive up to this at noon the day of, and I look out, and uh, you'll see in a second, and I see what our background is going to be. And oh my god. (laughs) You have the UPMC building. The UPMC building, the Highmark building, the everything else downtown is lit up in the backdrop here. Um wonderful wonderful front lighting from our uh, w- uh our benefactor that helped with the lighting situation that night uh that 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 literally is saving the show uh so i'll give them a, a an anonymous shout out here on the show but uh but man this is i it was so freaking cool for the introduction yes. uh to shows at penn brewery there will be more like i said there will be two more i'll be in the ballroom which is also a, a, a an awesome room uh, so it's going to be really interesting to see how, that, how it translates into that, uh, you know, because it's, it's, it's such an interesting just facility there at Penn Brewery, to be honest. I saw places I hadn't seen before when I, when I uh, was walking around and, uh, just really, really happy with how the show, uh, more or less came out here. So, um, but for being a kind of a skeleton crew that we had for this show, um, and, and everything and just, you know, um, things come up. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> when no, you're doing a show like this, so you know it's uh, it, it is what it is, and uh, you make the most of it. But man, it was a good crowd there, and uh, and again, this is the this is the fourth four of fourth of four shows, but you know, starting with Enjoy last Saturday in or the Saturday before into this, and there were two shows in town, the Enclave and the WrestleRex shows, and and everybody seemed to do very, very well. Look at that crowd in the background there hanging out, uh, you know, and, and and drinking the beers and drinking these special beers and everything like that. Oh, okay, that table said fuck you, but other than that, yeah. <laughs> the table I, I like, M- I like MV's reaction. He was like, just... He's like, yep, that didn't yeah. break. <laughs> so, uh, but it was a lot of fun. Oh. It was their World Series. Uh, so there was like, it was kind of like the scoreboard kind of thing all night that. and everything. So I, I, I'm, I'm sad I missed the World Series. Yeah, year. you had so much fun with it. I know you guys I, did some great title work last year. I, you know, I didn't get to do too much because we were really kind of handcuffed on what we could do with were, this yeah. and, and, and due to circumstances outside of our control with yep, equipment. Nope, Unfortunately, yep, nope. some of the equipment's in California for some reason, Oops. you know, you know, for instance. So uh, we may do pretty well on that. So that was a lot of fun. Um, and, and I hope you guys get a chance to watch it and, and, and we're putting the matches out independently like, as well. I know, like I said, I, I was it was in the other part of the uh, huge Pittsburgh spectrum, I guess is a better word for it. Mm-hmm. Pittsburgh vortex uh, of wrestling in the, in the rural Pittsburgh areas. Vortex. Of, yeah. The rural area of like mm-hmm. that. And, but seeing seeing stuff like the like the enclave get bookings and mm-hmm. and uh, Penn Brewery and the Vellum uh, I said it right uh, the Vellum Brew uh, Fort Fermentation uh, seeing those places get wrestling like that's what when I when I first started watching in when I first started indie wrestling watching and like. 20, 2006, 2007. Mm-hmm. That's what I really wanted to happen here. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't want like, again. IW, IWC, Norm Connors, like he brought wrestling close. Like he he brought it down the street mm-hmm. the first time. Like I went to the one in Monroeville. That's mwah, perfect. Mm-hmm. But like since then nothing is in the vicinity of pittsburgh no and i think it's you know like we're kind of talking about with bubba you know i i think that's two different audiences i think you have so many people in the city that will not go down the highway to all these shows that have been happening for the last 20 years and you have people that are down the highway or in west newton or 
and, you know, all respect to our West Newton friends down there in, 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 what is, in what Worthington. Is, I just I just was just looking at Brandon St. James. And oh, I'm this wondering. is wild. This is where they played Sabotage, like, I, uh, I think twice while everybody started brawling. Uh, yeah, they, <laughs> they completely did a New Jack thing. It was wild. And we were just trying, kind of trying to keep up for the most part. So, hey, look at those beers they're drinking. That's very hey. familiar, isn't it? So, and uh, I'm amazed we never got any beer on our cameras. That I'm, okay, not on the lens, at least. It was definitely some on yeah. and afterwards when I got that. Um, but yeah, no, this is the big. What was it? Five on five, six on six, something like that. Uh, yeah, that was the, match the end of the night. So, um, dude, it was wild. It was absolutely insane. And and and, and this is the kind of vibe I love. Is, yeah, is, this is what I like, when I think professional wrestling in this mm. city. That's the backdrop. Mm. That's the that's the atmosphere that I kind of want in <laughs> in wrestling. I've never actually imagined getting an atmosphere like this specifically. So, no, like um, I mean, maybe not like on a rooftop in downtown <laughs> Pittsburgh, but like being in the vicinity of that. Just like you know, you like know. seeing the like seeing that backdrop. I got honestly, if I was there, I would have probably like, like had a, a just like a anxiety attack for trying not to fuck anything up. Sort. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe it was a good thing I wasn't there. By the way, sabotage is still playing in the scene. Sabotage right now, and as they're that's going why, off. Uh, <laughs> that's why it's muted. <laughs> uh, well, at the moment, yes, but amazingly, they did not <laughs> capture this yet. But I think it's in well in yeah. the background, so. Uh, but no, yeah, no, it was, it was like, you could see this is a parking garage. This is like a parking lot garage. It's a, it's the top yes. floor, you know, of, of this thing. And, uh, you know, I remembered it and, and, and thankfully we had the wireless this night. Uh, so <laughs> before I even knew that they were doing this kind of stuff, but, uh, but no, like I, it, it, again, it's really cool. I think everybody came away with a, a good vibe. Uh, Matt was in the chat room earlier, true Prince pro. Uh, uh, 880 Show Brewery was legit the most beautiful setup ever seen for a show yep. in Pittsburgh area with the nighttime skyline perfectly in the background. I literally got there and there's like, you need to put the hard cam here. And I looked at it yep. and I was like, yes, I do. And I don't know if you can see so much in here, but there's, I don't think you see it at night, but if it was during the day and, and I'm hoping, I'm really hoping, lot. like I, I'm, 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 I'm going to be encouraging them to do a daytime show as well next year. Um, Cause you know, if we do this like in the summer or something, cause actually the Heinz, plant and the smokestacks are right there in the background as well but they're not lit up yeah. uh so there's you know that that kind of thing um so though it, it, and this is you know this is a weekend of like really really fun shows and interesting like and i love you know, we got some so uh we kind of yeah go ahead i kind of want to throw out an idea mm -hmm. like think think maybe not this year but next year they do light up night at Penn Brewery, mm -hmm. how like how everything in that backdrop mm -hmm. lights up, everything. That's it. But again, it's it, it's in November, but it's mm -hmm. gonna be freezing cold then. But still, yeah, don't make me do a show in the cold, please. More than we, we <sighs> do it's hard. So, and there's a uh, Brandon. And there's Brandon jumping off something that's very tall. Jumping on something really tall for the second weekend. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yep. Uh, and, so, I think he's done that in every outdoor show that we've done. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I, I, was, I think I was telling Bubba before the show, he's our, he's our, he's our new facade. Uh, uh, Tina says that Bumble Shoot, our music again in Seattle, our music comedy and arts festival had a wrestling over Labor Day weekend. Similar vibes in and View had the uh, Space Needle as their backdrop. Oh, oh the Space Needle oh, backdrop. Oh, man. Like, I that want... reminds me of, like, like I think that, like, NFL Street had something like that. Yeah, where it, yeah. It's had, like, the different I mean, backdrops play, of dude, cities. I did. I, ever, I wonder if there's stuff. You ever see the Hilltopless show that I did years ago? Um, I wonder if the video's still up. We live streamed this thing. Topless. I think the the band was the Cool Kids. Like we did a high level, uh, stream. Uh, it it was like this neighborhood fest. We did it at um, what is the park? Um, with uh, the Overlook Park. Um, not 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 like Mount Washington, but further down. 
um, between. I think it's called Overlook Park. I think it actually is Overlook Park. But yeah. again, like we did this with a stage in the backdrop of the city is the other thing. I can't believe mm -hmm. I just thought about this. Oh, there's a highlight reel for it. It'll give you an idea, hopefully. This is not the thing that I worked on. I was on, on more of the live stream. I don't do beauty shots. Uh, <laughs> but this is the festival that I got to work on. Uh, and I was like the, the technical director of Switcher, kind of what I do for wrestling. Uh, for this and these are none of these are my shots uh this is all the cool uh auxiliary stuff that was happening around it um but anyways um but no it was very cool because the stage was there the 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 you know the backdrop was basically the city um for this and it was just this is hilltopless 2017 yeah um you know that's that's really cool tina's sending us some stuff too um for the, oh yeah she's just yeah oh she got some pictures from this uh with a space oh. needle in the background ah, i can't hold on i gotta see if i can pull this up uh, so um i want to see if i can pull this up too uh the other show i got to do i got to go to uh, uh detroit uh, taylor michigan by the way the first sheets is by in michigan is by the airport hot news if you go to uh, the detroit area by the way um but and the wrestlers were very excited the ohio people were explaining to the canadian people backstage it was, it, with excitement i was it was it was wonderful uh but anyways um so uh this is ricky shane page um working with uh clash wrestling so shout out to ricky and jeremy up there uh for that a really cool crew to work with uh being a first time working it with that um, um but by the way i got to show the tina picture here there is a there is the referee there's a referee with the space needle oh, in the background. They're so like happy. below the space needle. That's amazing. Oh, that's so fun. That is so fun. Uh, basically, everybody's just posing with everybody's the space needle in the ring at this needle. point. <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't at this point? Like, I feel like everybody was with the uh, backdrop uh, uh, there the other night at our show too. So, um, but anyways, uh, so what was that? Oh, so so this was uh, simply the best. It was. Um, uh, I, I guess you would label it a death match show. Um, but it was not like, you know, it, it's basically like about everything had a gimmick, you know, we had Jessica Havoc was on the show. We had a lot of the 440 guys were on the show. Um, the Cogers were a part of it. Uh, there was, there's like a ter terracotta death match, you know, where they're, they're like breaking pots and, and, and stabbing each other with it. Uh, you know, uh, you know, things like that. Um, there's only like a little bit of tube work in there and, and there was this, 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 <laughs> fascinating contraption at the end of the night with ricky shane page against cruel and uh, riz oh, i think no. you know my background with cruel uh so thank no you. hard cam damage no hard this cam thing? damage there was a no 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 everything was they did not go out in the crowd for this thing or anything like that uh but anyways um there was it was called death from above okay what riz if i told you that ricky shane page was going to have a death from above match i i want to know what would you imagine that would be? Scaffolding match. A scaffold match. That, you think it's a scaffolding match? A scaffold match. Yes. What if I told you no, what if I told you nothing nothing was climbed? Then something fell from the sky? You would be correct. Oh, I'm gonna right. I'm gonna fade into this very dramatically, Riz, and I just want your uh, utmost reaction for, to it. No. <laughs> Riz, what are you looking at like, right now? It's the it's the, like a mohawk of fluorescent light tubes. Yes. And then that is a pool of light tubes bundled together. And the idea is I'm not going to show the main event of this thing. Because <sighs> this show will get pulled from Good. something that new. Uh, <laughs> but basically what happens is uh, your, your person gets slammed into the, the pool of it. And those light tubes that are sticking up come down on you. So you get a shower of light tubes on top of light tubes. It, only in Detroit. The, uh, only at a Ricky Shane Page show. Only it's Ricky also Shane the Page. same guy who came up with a ladder match with colored ladders. Because this is one of the Circle Six shows that I did. Uh, when he was a part oh, that's of that. right. I remember? remember watching that. Yeah, yeah, and and, and so it, see, that's good. I like that's that. Good. So, like, like you, you can your only own... use your ladder to climb for whatever the 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 match was for. I think maybe a championship or a opportunity. I think it was a tag title match. Yeah, right? This is something I guess he had tried at a promotion that you know at, at something. It had been a while. They were trying it on a bigger platform, kind of thing. He he is a you know I don't want to use the term innovator of violence, but <laughs> it's really like. 
he's kind of like a, and I guess this was something that had happened at an IWA show, which makes sense. There's a big deathmatch promotion, makes right? Makes sense. Um, so he was uh, wanted to be a part of this, was part of Clash and everything uh-huh. like that. So really fun show, really good crew. Um, you know, it, you know, it, it, and it wasn't like you know we we've done other shows, we've done some no piece shows, we've done some XBW shows, and it just feels like light tube, light tube, light tube, light tube all all freaking night, right? Uh, uh, Detroit shows in general, light tubes yeah. all night. It feels like um, this was, um, you know, it it. it it escalated through the night. Like the pre-show didn't have light tubes. Like <laughs> the like, pre-show didn't have light XPW, tubes. we did the one full XPW show I got to produce. We had a pre-show that was a three-way light tube match. And I'm just like, what are we doing the rest of the show? Right? Um, like I did more light you tubes. Know, it was yeah, the answer is more light tubes, apparently. Yeah. And, and I don't think we had syringes on that show. That came later. Oh no, we did have a syringe on that show um so just not in the i actually pulled up pictures from a show several years ago that i forgot syringes were involved i forget what it was but i'm just like oh i have seen this before um anyways so <laughs> um, that's a weird thing you see for wrestling sword syringes you see, yeah it's, it's a weird thing like to say so you have normalized seen well thanks to swerve and hangman it's normalized so it's just part of wrestling now yeah somebody was complaining about the, all the uh, GC, I think they called it the GCW ness or XPW ness yeah, of. Were you there for that conversation of pro wrestling? I'm like, what are you talking about? It's like, oh, they're doing light tubes and this. And I was like, oh, the pay per views, like not like every week. Actually, they haven't been really bloody from the week to week show lately. Have they, they haven't done that in a while? No, because so they got Will Osprey. They do. <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> Why are you in the picture twice? I don't know. How did you do that? How did you clone yourself on the show? I don't know, Sorg. I don't know what you're talking about. What are about. you doing? God, I feel like you're. I I don't know what's happening. Um. Anyways, this is enough I'm about doing the local that. stuff. I'm, d- I'm doing that just for Brad Bradley. Right I want to give a. I like. Well, I do my my ads in reverse order. What time is it? This show's already too long. I think. Um, it's game time. Riz, uh, first of all, we we talked about it. Go check out IndieWrestling.us. A lot of stuff going on. Art of Bay Bloody Harvest. Uh, 880 Wrestling, of course. Um. Uh. The 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 Clash simply the best. Uh, show is actually on IWTV over there, so go to that. Um, we just sent them the master here uh, yesterday, I think, so they should have a refreshed copy of there without all the intermission stuff and all that stuff. Actually, the only intermission was because it was taking so long to put that contraption up because they were having some much difficulty with it. It's the only reason we had <laughs> an intermission. Also, also, oh my so god, good. well-timed deathmatch show. Thank you. Thank you, everybody that I work with lately that has been taking time to focus on time. At a wrestling show, because uh, if we, whether we're backstage, camera guy on the camera, or somebody in the front row, a long show feels long. You know what I mean? And oh, yeah. and you know we 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 kind of experience it with AEW these days and things like that. Um, but at least we can get up and pause and and deal with that. Uh, so I mean that's that's what's fair to your your crew and that's what's fair to your fans is a well timed show and I and I appreciate the work that um, uh, several people that I worked with in the last couple of weeks have been paying to that uh, and, or identifying that they have a problem they need to fix. Uh, so I'm just I'm just happy these conversations are happening or being executed. Uh, so um, but. Uh, <laughs> You won't care because you can watch everything on demand at IndieWrestling.us. <laughs> and we cut out all the bullshit. So, you know, don't worry about it. Uh, so much stuff there. 880 Wrestling, including the stuff coming up on uh, Thursday Night Fights this week. Uh, uh, the card looks like it's going to be amazing. There's going to be some announcements here on Wednesday, I believe, about some of the matches coming up. There's uh, some exciting stuff going on. And, of course, they're going to have the Christmas, or, I'm sorry, Thanksgiving Eve show. Uh, Heath Slater is going to be a part of the next RWA show. Bloody Harvest with that dog collar match is already up there. The final cut just made it to the network. BOD and DVD. Um, uh, buttons will be added here shortly and of course our friends at APWF will be featured on IndieWrestling.us's YouTube and streaming platforms as well uh, so you can watch all those on demand and watch the first two apps, uh, it, uh, matches or your favorite match uh, that interests you from the first two APWF shows on both the Indie Wrestling and the uh, and uh, the Triple B I, I can't remember which his YouTube channel is I think it's the Triple B um, look for the Triple B experience you'll find his YouTube channel on YouTube. That was redundant. Riz. Stork. A lot of stuff happening. A lot of movements happening in professional wrestling this week. First of all, Samantha has moved on. Samantha and Irvin, our favorite ring announcer of this decade, probably. Most likely. Um, is, decade? 
decades make de- decade is the of the twenties short of the twenties. Can tell me who's your favorite? Who who am I? I'm like no, no, I said too short. I said too short. Too short because she's one of the best ones I've seen in. I know I didn't want to throw into in sourness at a Lillian or a, or a, um other people. I'm not thinking Pedro like DeLuca, Tony Schimmel, Chuck Roberts, <laughs> Chuck Roberts, buddy. Hey, bud. Hey, pal. Oh, I love hey, I love hey, working guy. with him and Erie now. It's so much fun when he's not running a promotion. <laughs> um. <laughs> Turns out a lot of people are more fun when they don't run a company. Yeah, that's very true. Um, but yeah, Sa- Samantha Irvin is one of the best talents they had. And mm-hmm. who knows? Maybe she's going to just chill out. Uh, she could be on with Ricochet. Who knows? Yeah. Could be out with Ricochet, Ricochet off air. Or she could be an elite like, announcer. So, yeah. Uh, I you know I just so do, I do don't it. think okay go ahead I don't think she's going to go to AEW why why is that why you said yes yes why I'm sorry I backed off to take That's a okay. drink I backed off to take a drink of this <laughs> so I don't think she is I mean maybe soon maybe someday she will but I don't think she's going like like what Ricochet did. And be like, okay, I'm going to AEW now. Uh, I think she is going to take as much time as she wants. She might just need a rest. She might just. She might need a rest. rest yeah. But I think that I, like I said, I don't think wrestling announcing mm-hmm. is her top goal. Well, I, yeah, that, she, that I wonder. Maybe a, there is something else, um, or maybe she just wants to travel with the hubby. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, she, she's a she's a great flautist mm-hmm. and also a great good, great singer. Mm-hmm. So maybe she, something is in the work there. Jillian went off and did some albums, right? Speaking of that, we an album, up, an album maybe? maybe. Okay, I don't know. She might have done yeah. other other work. Who knows? Yeah, but like, I don't, I don't, I don't think Samantha's like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, like oh, I'm gonna go to eat every now. It was preconceived. But, it was a month ago. So who knows? Who, who knows? knows? I I would not be sad if she shows up. Because I yeah, I'm think she will only up. enhance the presentation of the product. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, respect to the people that they've had having it announced that were not that are not Chimmel. Wait, yep. Chimmel, not Chimmel. Uh, so Chimmel's the one that got hit in the balls with the thing. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's right. Watching, I was watching yeah. Watcher Media. <laughs> I watched what they put it up too. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, sorry, I just turned into 2008 YouTube in my head right now. <laughs> um, Remember equals three. That's what. what? Nothing, sword. Oh, anyways, um, but yeah, no, I think uh, because um, there's been some blessed and stellar announcers in there. Um, yeah, she's, she's focusing on, like Tina yeah. mentioned, she's focusing on her on her music and family. So that is out there. Okay, yeah. so that was in her, and I didn't read the whole thing. I'm sorry. I That's okay. It's, it's fine. That. Oh, you, you were talking about Justin Roberts as well. Uh, Justin Roberts, yes. Uh, but anyways, no, I, I, only enhance. I don't wonder what's happened with Bobby Cruz because I haven't seen him on my TV for a while. So. But again, who knows? Again, there's more than just wrestling for some people. If you're yeah. not in front of your screen, it's not a slight uncue. Okay. As we so discussed does, last week. Does Chelsea Green leave her intro? Or does she have the intro yet? The still or is it just I think sh- it's in her song now too. But you know Is it yeah, I thought that was I literally it, just take some at the beginning. doing it and put it in her music so that nobody else has to try and fail. Yeah. 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 Although I love the dude just be like Chelsea Green, you know. Yeah. So and then yeah. they had to, she had yet yeah, she had to make him to redo it, which is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, the other movement, the Motor City Machine Guns are now a part of WWE. Good for them. If anybody that's a, freaking that's a deserves, weird sentence. I love. I watched the match back last night yesterday. Mm-hmm. And I love the announcers were like, they're your favorite tag team's favorite tag team. They revolutionized what you know as tag team wrestling now. I was like, yep. I love the way they put them over, uh, former tag team or TNA tag champs and everything like that. Um, I you said that. Was that Graves? To, um, between Graves and, and Bennett, yes. Okay. Um, or Bad News. Barrett, Bennett, Barrett. Whatever, whatever. Like, uh, bad news, what bad. universe am I in? Um, <laughs> bad news. Bad news. Um, anyways, but no, I appreciated that, and I appreciated the um, 
the uh, well, it, so it, it got me thinking because everybody's kind of like putting their whole like like most machine guns history and appreciation posts and stuff and i was like wow what's my other than i talked to alice shelley in the bathroom a couple months ago um but <laughs> about that harpo show we were both working um but uh but but, but i i also recalled res the first show that i ever held a camera for had the motor city machine guns in newell remember the newville knockouts Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This show had, and I explicitly remember, because it was the first time I was there, like, you know, before the bell, before the fans and everything like that. That was my first experience doing that, right? Mm-hmm. And and I just remember, because one of the big matches was Motor City Machine Guns with, I believe they were known as Babyface Fire at the time, maybe still Team Catfish. That was Gory and one uh, now known as Joaquin Wild. Right. So how that rolls together is interesting. Uh, but it was just it, it was just very cool that that was like and also like these guys started in 2006 together and that was 2008 if I recall. Um, so also the same show had like Johnny Gargano, maybe Jake Roberts unconfirmed. Um, it was like it was a crazy lineup for something like that. In retrospect, obviously the everybody was mm-hmm. new babies at the time. Basically, I think Johnny Gargano was still Flag Tights guy. Uh, oh, so. Flag Tights. <laughs> It's everywhere where he ended up going, to be honest. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I don't think he went to all those places at that point. No, so, he didn't. Um, but anyways, no, and also also doing great stuff. Right, had a great. Uh, actually, oh my god, he's gonna face him next week. DIY was the other winners yep. of the tri- other tri- yep. trio match. Uh, so I I do like how the first match they had was a trios match. Mm-hmm. Was a, was a triple, triple threat. threat? Yeah, tag match because that fits what they did in in dna Mm -hmm. like for a while like they did that non they did that non-stop action Mm. trademark Mm -hmm. uh and uh like Mm -hmm. and it showed how they didn't really miss a step for that uh triple or triple threat tag match type Mm -hmm. situation Mm -hmm. where it's like a crazy ass multi-man match so I am enjoying what they're going, to do. but they're what SmackDown is going to be with them in there. Mm-hmm. Who knows? They may, they may actually win the titles coming up and run with it. Make them, make them run with it. Yep. Like have a, have a series. Like I would love a series with them and DIY. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. That, that's, or, that's kind of a dream match, isn't it? Yeah. Or Waller and uh, Theory. Mm-hmm. I'm here yeah. for it. I'm here for it. Yep. So good stuff. Uh, good good announcements for all for the most part here. Uh, so yeah, in, in both, all the shows have been hot this week. I've been loving the Bloodline uh, stuff that's going on and and, and all that. So um, oh, speaking of other uh, debuts. Did you see the Shelton Benjamin match last week? Yeah. Uh, what was it? Him and Leo Rush. Yep. Oh my God. Yep. Shelton is such I, a badass, and I forgot. <laughs> that is the most vicious Shelton Benjamin I recall. And it was so perfect. It is. Like that that was that was how you debut in a new company when the other company decided not to do anything with you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like it's just just Is that what up. happened or was it just contracts? Probably contract, but like, yeah, they still haven't. They still didn't do anything with him. That's okay. what I. That, like, he was just like the guy in the thing out with of, Cedric, you're right? Yeah, out of like the, out of that that one documentary about OVW. Mm-hmm. Who in there besides Shelton Benjamin didn't do anything? Which documentary about OVW are talking about? Not the wrestlers. It was, no, not the wrestlers. Like the the but old one, it was like the oh, wait, old w- one. Yeah, with, WWE Network did yeah. one on them, right? Yeah, right. Like with Lesnar and now, I, I, and, all respect. Shelton had a great career in WWE. He did. He, he did between the 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 work that he did as as World's Greatest Tag Team with Kurt Angle. Um, That's, he was he was the highlight of of Money in the Bank matches for ages. It felt like, um, like but they kind of, yes they did slot him into kind of the good hand spot, right? Um, they did the mama thing for a little bit. Uh, yeah, yeah which is, well, you know, whatever, you know, inter- it, audience of one. Um, but, uh, so, so like he did a lot, he did a lot of great stuff, went to ring of honor with Haas and, and did a bunch of stuff too. 
right? Yeah. Uh, I remember so, that being a lot of fun. Yeah, like for that, during the times that he's been in Money in the Bank, mm-hmm. for all the crazy ass spots he's done, mm-hmm. maybe one shot with the with the briefcase. I think he said the IC or something, you know, um, things like that. And, and and maybe you know he's a guy that may, you know I don't know if I can see this guy main event in WrestleMania, but my God, he can put in some like he's got a great career, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and again. Being Ro- not everybody can be Roman Reigns, and that's okay. So people are perfectly happy being the Godfather. You know, uh, the Godfather is very happy being the Godfather. <laughs> you know, so oh, yeah. you know, it, 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 it's 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 you know, you still succeeded. You still got to WrestleMania. Listen to Karrion Cross talking about being at WrestleMania this year. You know what I mean? He's mm-hmm. cool. He he's good. He's in a good spot. You know, uh, and he did the thing. And and what he does next is just you know going to be. He didn't have to wear point. a red helmet. He didn't have to wear a red helmet anymore. He's no longer a gladiator. It's like they did the yeah. same thing to him. They did the, tried to do the uh, 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 Farouk back in the day, uh, or Ric Flair when they tried to pitch him at at WCW. Uh, so <laughs> it was a, you know, just the helmets are just a bad deal, right? Um, but anyways, gold standard gimmick as well for Sheldon. Oh, yes. I forgot about the gold standard, man. It's good stuff, and now that's here. And and you can say, well, he he really kind of like thrashed Leo and stuff. It's like, man, yep. he's going to make some people look real good here. This is the like, promo. You, like Leo, Leo looked like a like, like that was a great. Leo's the right guy. Uh, Leo's probably got got a dream match against Shelton there. You know, it's even there. He yep. touched the guy. Uh, uh, Leo's a fucking talent and phenomenal and and, and, and good dude from from the little bit I've had interactions mm-hmm. with him. Uh, so like the, the the promo they did with. I mean, the, the promo between, like, I guess the Hurt, what are they calling it? The, is, the is, is it Hurt Business? business? Yeah. Wait, wait, hurt Business and, and Swerve. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, yeah, like, we, we don't have a name yet, but we're kind yeah. of just proto, proto Hurt Business right now. <laughs> right. But, like, between that and, mm-hmm. like, the, the, you're here because of us. Yes. We that laid this shit down for you. Oh my line. God. My God. I don't know if Lashley's actually coming or not, but if you just give me a Sheldon and Swerve feud for a couple months, it's, I am it's here happening. for it's it. It's happening on the 30th. Is it happening on the 30th? It, yep. Oh, I am so here for that, wherever that freaking goes. They're getting Swerve versus Shelton in Cleveland on the 30th. Mm-hmm. Damn, what am I doing next Wednesday? <laughs> I was going to try to drag you out here and play some more Five Nights at Freddy's, but uh, maybe we'll go to Cleveland. Uh, but anyways. <laughs> no more Five Nights. No more Five Nights? Oh, all the Five Nights. Dude, the jump scares were so great. Yeah. This guy and Katie uh, uh, played Five Nights at Freddy's for the fir- both for the first time last night, and it was so much fun. Go back in the feed. Just look for the Five Nights stuff in the feed. Um, they just stuff looks like security cameras and stuff, and just watch them. Katie has like the shirt over her face, yeah, like she, the whole time she's not playing and everything. She like was, that. she, it's she so was good. having a time. Oh my god! And it was the simplest game we played last night too. So, uh, anyways, we played some Vampire Survivors, some Dead by Daylight, some Friday the Thirteenth. We're having a fun spooky game night on Monday night on the feeds. So that's on all the feeds. Mayhem show. Okay, not indie wrestling. I thought that'd be weird. Uh, but <laughs> would it be weird? Yeah, a little well. She does officially have a championship, so. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah I mean, but we had yeah. a mayhem show. Also, can't so we're trying to do that stuff. So, anyways, on that note, let's give a shout out to our friend Slice on Broadway, feeding our people here in the studio. Pizza. Now we didn't have any guests, but we were doing setup for Extra Life. Uh, my brother and and, and friends are going to be uh, dropping in here, doing twenty four hours from noon until like, this is kind of a crossover thing, but it's helping feeding them while they were setting up and everything. Uh, and we got some love there. We're going to leave for them tomorrow too. It's like leaving the cookies out for Santa Claus. <laughs> Just leave the p- cold pizza out for the gamers. Uh, so go check out our friend Slice on Friday, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Uh, New York City style yins or bake. Go check them out. And if you get the chance to be on hold, the theme song is amazing. Just imagine everything I say here on this ad, but sung in the most ridiculous way possible. I almost want to be like, put me on hold. Yeah. It's 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 cool. I've, Bruce, have you heard this yet? I have not. Oh man, you got to get that. I know you go in person uh, whenever you're in town. So, yep. anyways, Riz and chat room, what did you learn from wrestling this week? I should have had Bubba message me what he learned from wrestling this week. Oh. So, <laughs> anyways, uh, Riz, what did you learn? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I learned that the match doesn't start 
a dog collar match doesn't start until the dog collar is on. <laughs> so, oh no, they did and, that thing. So you can do whatever you want without the dog collar on the on your on your. It hasn't started. Yeah, it hasn't started yet. And you know what? When the when the dog collar is on, there are no rules. Mm-hmm. You know what, Riz? I learned something very similar. I learned that the match hasn't started and there are no rules until Sabotage stops playing. Yeah, that's a, that's yeah, the key. Yeah. That's a like that's a that is the Nate's that that's Spider Nate we- or Nate Spider Web <laughs> style right there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, Spider Nate Web, Spider Nate Web. Uh, did, did did you did did I show you the one where uh, we were putting out like we have a uh, Missy does a social media thing where she puts out like basically repop resurfaces basically our entire catalog back catalog in wrestling dot us, mm-hmm. and there's a show with both Spider Nate Web and Corey Graves, then Sterling teams Keenan on it. And they started like talking on the thread for an old IWC show. <laughs> I was like, "Hey, remember this shit?" <laughs> you know, I was like, "It was a weird." It was like, "I was like, what's oh. happening on my Twitter feed right now?" <laughs> right. So, um, but I should be surprised. We've you know uh, obviously had dealings with both of them. Uh, so, and also, I keep I keep forgetting Spider Nate Webb had like a, a a you know a presence here. You know, uh, back in the day, I remember seeing him a couple times when I started going. But anywho. That that bring you talking about old school, like IWC tapes and stuff like that. I remember the first time I sold DVDs for you, sort. Yeah, there was one DVD on that. <laughs> oh my god, there. was it Disco I, Inferno versus Raven? Yes, and you're trying to sell it. Yes. It was like from and like I I didn't even and I don't even know if I have a master of that honestly because everything got so screwed up at one point yeah. because of who was holding the DVDs and everything like that. Uh, that when we when we transferred them, so I don't even have a I, catalog. I guaranteed you, Sorg, that you would sell that by the end of the that. Night. I would yeah, sell that so by I'm the like, end. Of the okay, night. pal. Now, okay. now to be fair, it was sold. Yes, but it might have been like with another DVD. Anyways, <laughs> you <a> <laughs> package deal. Again. Okay, yeah. here's the. Um, I still remember Sandman and. Raven going at it. Uh, I think one of them was a surprise at the show, and they're just like going at it like a married couple. At the well, table. I remember it was that one, and then there was a Raven versus Larry's Abisko DVD. <laughs> there was a wild event. Shit back then. Oh my god! I don't even know if I have all that stuff for YouTube. Like it's, I think it's just lost to the world. If anybody's out there that has an extensive old DVD collection of IWCs, if they still work, because I understand that was like an issue for a long time yeah. before we were involved. So I would love to try to. Uh, uh, Maybe that like Nebrowski goes on these um you know hunts for footage like he was supposed to be on to talk about the Andre stuff here uh, tonight uh, but you know he's too busy on the JCW tour. Um, God, I hope that's public. Uh, <laughs> Oops, I presumed you know. Uh, Atina Key says that I've learned that no one does pop culture references like Morrow. Uh, Morrow be on that show is one of the big factors that I want to watch the show. Yes, obviously. and tomorrow's pre sales for WrestleMania are going to be a madhouse. Oh, I'm just gonna wait a couple oh, months boy. and get what I can. I'm, I just want to be there. Matthew Burst Trooper is a pro on the Twitters. Go check his stuff. Uh, uh, Matt just did a a God. Was it the feud between Ziggy and Tony Johnson? You did on there because you popped it up and I, well, it was weird because I'm just I just punched a bunch of old Rise stuff in, including a Ziggy match, and and I saw this 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 thumbnail of the two of them, and I'm like, I didn't post this. <laughs> <laughs> the feed and i just appreciate that go check it out he's doing some good stuff over there um no uh, way. what Wait, hold on let me finish this thing uh, i'm very excited uh for the future holds for 8 a wrestling between uh jack pollock and mv after what happened with them we'll see yes jack pollock turned on mv young riz no i saw longer, i saw the clips no longer is he happy jack he's not happy jack not happy jack uh, from Dave Ponder, we learned that our internet wrestling community is so stupid. The reaction to Samantha leaving WWE. Also, I love Dave Batista even worse. Yeah, <laughs> he yeah, is a real man, and that's all I'm going to say about that. We will it. not touch that's on the it. rest of it. Yep, nope. Um, nope. Yep, nope. It, what was this question? It was Sorg from 2019. What was Sorg from 2019? What was Sorg? I don't know what was Sorg. What was I doing in 2019? Anyways, um, Riz, Sorg? real quick, and we gotta get out of here. I found, I found, I found it. Found what? 
under Joe Dombrowski's Pro Wrestling Library from 2003. I have the video of the match between Raven versus... Oh, no! (laughs) Oh, no. Okay. That'll be a watch along at some point here, then. Yep. All right. Guys, thank thank you, you Joe Dombrowski. Riz plays games. He's been doing stuff. Oh, I bumped your your zoomy zoom. That's okay. There you go. Riz plays games. Riz plays games with Dutters on the stream. Mm -hmm. Spoopy spoopy games on the the Twitter. Or on on the streams. So thank you, Riz, for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> you can't like move into yourself. That's like a Riz thing going on. That well, is now weird. it looks like I have like two God, heads coming like, out of my body. Yeah, it's like that one scene from Army of Darkness. Which one of you is badass? Um, anyways, at Sorgatron on the social medias, I will be at a- in Johnstown, PA for APWF. Thank you, Bobby Brewer, for being on the show. Always good. I wish we had a little more time to chat, of course. Um, but uh, oh my yeah, God, go- this is a young Chuck Roberts. Of course it is. Uh, Chuck is my homeboy. Thank you, everybody. Stay tuned for Patreon. I don't know what we're going to get into. I'm probably, I might talk a little bit more about behind the scenes about this weekend and some stuff that we're dealing with. Uh, some fun bits for you guys uh, on Patreon. Thank you, everybody. To support us. Uh, I'll tell you what Ricky Shane is, Page is really like backstage. Uh, <laughs> and so much more. Uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Thank you so much for joining us. So much for being a supporter on Patreon or wherever you are. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.